Hello and welcome to the Capitol Report on NTD Television. I'm Steve Lance. Presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. testifies, alleging his vaccine safety remarks were censored by the government. The appearance prompting polarized reactions from Republicans and Democrats. NTD's Iris Tao has more from Capitol Hill. The topic of government censorship was at the center of a congressional hearing today as Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. testified amid backlash from Democratic lawmakers. It's a rallying cry for bigotry and hate. So now I'm subject to this new form of censorship, which is called targeted propaganda, anti-Semitism, racism. These are, are the most appalling, disgusting pejoratives, and they're applied to me to silence me. And Kennedy was invited by Republicans to testify in front of the House subcommittee on the weaponization of the government. But right after Kennedy's opening remarks, House Democrats moved, though unsuccessfully, to remove him. It's no to allowing a witness to degrade and, this is not speech others time. and violate the rules. Republicans called it ironic. Censor him literally in a hearing about censorship. The cognitive dissonance of that is deafening. It's insane. And the Republican chair of the committee says Kennedy's testimony. Help us expose and stop what's going on. This alliance, big government pressuring private entities to censor Americans. And that's as the former New York Post editor who broke the Hunter Biden laptop story also testified alleging censorship. It was because it was true and it was a threat to the power centers in this country. But not everyone found the hearing worthwhile. I asked Democratic Congressman Derry Connolly. Do you think today's hearing should be held at all? No. If you videotape this hearing, it could be a Saturday Night Live skit, except it's not funny. Reporting from the Capitol, Iris Howe and TD News. A heated discussion on Capitol Hill. Several Biden administration officials face tough questions from lawmakers over their strategy on communist China. NTD's Sam Wong brings us the latest. The House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party held a hearing Thursday addressing the Biden administration's current approach in dealing with the CCP. Committee Chairman Mike Gallagher, a Republican, started off by praising several of the administration's policy measures in dealing with China. Secretary of State Blinken reiterated the determination that the CCP was committing genocide in Xinjiang. The administration levied historic export controls on advanced U.S. semiconductors and equipment going to the PRC. The administration then succeeded in aligning its policy with critical allies. The hearing comes on the heels of a visit to China by several top U.S. officials, aiming to put a stalled relationship back into motion. In a change of tone, Gallagher said that such a diplomatic approach has put Washington in a compromising position. And instead of holding the Chinese Communist Party accountable, the administration chased CCP diplomats around the world, seeking meetings in Beijing as if they, not the CCP, had something to apologize for. Representative Blaine Luchtemeyer said that China is running on a surplus in its trade with the U.S. And that extra pile of cash in China's pocket could be used to subsidize the regime's military capacity and its human rights abuses. Here's this exchange with Thea Rosman Kentler, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Export Administration. We're, we're funding by $382 billion of a deficit their activities. Would you not agree with that? We, we are aggressively attending with a, contending with a strategic trade th threat posed by China. No, you're China. not. No, you're not. I'm, I'm tired of your flowery language this morning. Please answer the question. Washington recently stepped up restrictions on imports from China's Xinjiang region, using a law targeting forced labor in China. Two more companies have been added to the U.S. blacklist as a result. Despite all the heated moments, Chairman Gallagher said that both Republicans and Democrats are fighting for the same cause. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Sam Wong, NTD News. A massive crowd in Washington, D.C. Spiritual practitioners are calling for an end to the Chinese Communist Party's 24-year-long persecution of Falun Gong. The practice is rooted in the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. But unfortunately, living by these values is a crime under the Chinese Communist Party. And today's Melina Wisecup has that story. We're here in the heart of the nation where thousands of Falun Dafa practitioners have gathered to raise awareness and call for the end to the 24 year long persecution against this spiritual practice. We spoke to some of them who are here today who actually lived through this persecution in China. And she was arrested immediately and sent to the um, uh, detention center. By that time I lost contact with my mom for two weeks. 
Her mom's sudden disappearance is only part of the story. Li Jing began the practice as a young girl at age 13, making social life difficult due to the CCP's propaganda campaign to squash the practice. So I felt um, isolated. Even though I know um, Falun Gong is righteous, I had to hide it from my new friends. And her story is one of millions. Even today, the pressure hasn't stopped for these spiritual believers. Some can't help but question why. Electrical batons to beat me. I lost my uh, consciousness. Well, we just uh, practice meditation. We try to do, uh, our, to do our best to be a good person. I believe that's the best. Uh, is the universal values. Raising awareness in the streets of Washington, D.C., they hold signs reading, In the CCP, humanity's only hope is to improve morality. And Falun Dafa is great. It is up to us to stand up for those being persecuted in China and to make our voices heard. We also know there is growing evidence that the CCP is even harvesting organs from religious and ethnic minorities around the world. The House passed a bill recently to hold the CCP accountable for forced organ harvesting, of which Falun Gong practitioners are often the victims. Organ harvesting bill, which has the most realistic chance of being passed and sent to the president's desk for signature. Many speakers encouraged the spiritual practitioners to continue to stand up against this atrocity and thanked them for their courage in not letting the CCP wipe out the practice of Falun Dafa, which has since spread to over 100 countries around the world. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskup, NTD News. Welcome back to NTD's Capital Report. I'm Steve Lance. Today marks the 24th anniversary since the Chinese Communist Party launched its persecution on Falun Gong. I had a chance to take a deep dive into the persecution, and after realizing what we came across, we named this report the Persecution of the Century. In this report, I sat down with a number of elected officials, a former U.S. ambassador at large for religious freedom, experts on religious freedom, and Falun Gong practitioners. We explored the reasons and the impact of this persecution. Why is the CCP afraid of people of faith? Why did the free world let this happen while growing deeper ties with communist China? What price is America paying for soft peddling on the CCP? The special report will air tonight on YouTube at 8 p.m. Eastern and on NTD broadcast television this Saturday, July 22nd at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And a bipartisan group of lawmakers today saying they want more information and less secrecy surrounding UFOs. The representatives accuse various government agencies of suppressing important information. NTD's Ariane Pazdar has more. There are a lot of people who don't want this to come to light. Republican Congressman Tim Burchett is leading a House Oversight Committee hearing on Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, or UAPs, next week. On Thursday, he and a bipartisan group of committee members talked about the upcoming hearing. We're going to have witnesses who can speak frankly to public about their experiences. We've had a heck of a lot of pushback about this hearing. We've had members of Congress who fought us. We've had members of the intelligence community and also the Pentagon. Even NASA backed out on us. Among the witnesses will be former Navy Commander David Fravor. He shot a leaked video showing an unidentified flying object suddenly disappear into the water off the coast of San Diego. Three House Republicans recently visited a Florida Air Force base. The goal was to meet with pilots about their sightings. However, the Pentagon last minute prevented the group from meeting the pilots and didn't show them sensitive information. If the Department of the Air Force, if the Pentagon thinks that they're above Congress, they have something else coming to them. Just this week, Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer and Republican Senator Mike Rounds introduced an amendment to this year's defense budget. The amendment would require government records related to UFOs to be declassified and disclosed. Ariane Pastar, NTD News. Thank you for watching the Capitol Report. If you want to see our full broadcast, check us out at epochtv.com.